Hi there. Well, it is the most beautiful day. There is not a cloud in the sky and I don't think anything's forecast. And I've come to a field I didn't expect to be on. I was planning on something else completely different, but I noticed this had been done. It had got grass in it. I can see dressed maize seeds. So that's what's obviously gone in, but nothing coming up already. And it won't until it starts raining again. It's good for Roman and Celtic, this field. I'm really pleased that I've, I've got a chance to come on it. I found a couple of small Roman coins. One better than the other. This one's quite nice. Soldiers in the single standard. Um, I did a video on soldiers and standards and their coins recently. I'll put a link in the description. Quite interesting. You can date your coin almost down to the a period of four or five years from whether it has a single or a double standard on the reverse. So that's nice. Single standard, a later coin, not an earlier one. And then this. Now, God knows what it is. It's, it's a really interesting looking coin. I don't know what's on the reverse. Um, I think it might be the emperor stabbing the guy falling off his horse. And I originally thought it was silver, but I don't think it is. I think it's copper. But the, the, the emperor on the other side looks very unusual for a Roman coin. I can't work it out at all. It may even have been badly struck, actually. That's probably, that could be why it's also awkward. Yeah, I think it's been double struck and that's why I can't make any, anything out of it, head or tail. But I think it's copper. And I think it's, um, I think it's got to be Roman because I can't think what else it is. Um, but it's really unusual and a really lovely, lovely sign because I don't come to this end of the field. I've never been on this end of the field. I concentrate on the far end because um, that's where it's been good so far. So this is definitely not as many signals. But if I'm finding things like that early on, I think that's what it is. It's been double struck and that's why it looks so peculiar. But it, it really is peculiar looking. Anyway, I'm going to stick on this side for the time being, see how we get on. I forgot my pin pointer. Ah! But thank God the ground's nice and sandy so I can get through it in the old fashioned way rather than having to get through clay and mud. Thank God. But it may be, hopefully, it'll be a masterclass in how to find stuff without a pin pointer. And we'll see how we get on. Well, this is turning out to be quite good fun. Now, I'm rushing around a bit, as I always do on somewhere new, and I've got a bit to do because I'm having to do all, all that instead of using my pinpointer. And I've left my camera about a mile that way, my main camera. So I'm going to go back there and I'll plug my speaker in, etc. And I'll start doing some live digs because I'm finding some quite cool things, including this lovely brooch. Now, I think it's what's called a hot hill type. It's sadly missing its arm. And it's also sadly missing. I hope you can hear me okay. It's actually quite windy. Um, but more often than not, the wind's coming from the same side as the sun isn't. So hopefully I'll be in shot, not in the shade, and you can hear me as well. But anyway, sorry, I'm rambling. Um, it's missing one of its wings, and it's missing the business end, i.e. where the spring and the pin come from. That It's missing its pin too. But it's got its catch plate, and, and it's also extremely silvered. So that would have been an, a very, very grand brooch at one point. I love these brooches. They're really, really cool. I mean, I'm, I'm thrilled with that. It's a shame it's not a bit more intact, but you know, you can't have everything. And then just down here. Now, as I said, I'll plug my speaker in in a minute and um, because I'm definitely coming to a sort of what I feel is a hotter area. And it's just here. It's another brooch. But this one looks like it might be a bit a bit fuller. Look at that, absolutely wonderful. What a cracker. Now that, well that's missing its pin. But it's damn well got everything else. This is a beauty. I've not found this design before. Um, I thought they were called head stud brooches, um, this type, um, but I'm not sure this one. I think this is a bit of a variation on a theme, but it's just an absolute little cracker. 
I'm completely thrilled. I mean, that is, that's made my day. I could go home on that. That's just beautiful. <sighs> blown away. Well, I really was rather blown away by this brooch. I mean, it's absolutely fabulous. What, 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 what a find. Welcome to summer headquarters. Well, not summer headquarters. I'm not here for very long. And the weather's been absolutely horrible. So it means I've had lots of time to edit films and do research on things like this and clean things up, etc. He still gets masses of exercise. The beach is just down there. And so he just, he just absolutely loves it. It would just be nice if the sun came out. I put this on the detectinghub.co.uk information below because I haven't seen one of these before. It's quite similar to other types that I've had and I can't compare, I'm afraid. I don't even have my brooch book with me, the hat app, which I usually refer to for this sort of thing because it, it's, it's just a brilliant reference book. Um, details of all the things I use, my camera stuff, the, I mean, little bits and pieces like this and my reference books. I've got links to all of them in the description if you're interested. This is a very good little um, glass, this actually, and it's really portable, so it's perfect for, for use in places like this. Anyway, sorry. Um, I put it on the detecting hub, and it's a type that I haven't found before. I mean, as I said in the field, I thought it might be a head stud type because of what is looks like where a head stud would have been, or an, in this case, an inbuilt one. But it's not. Apparently, according to those who know, it's a sawfish type. Now, I looked up sawfish, and I'll give you some photographs here. The reason they're called sawfish is because you would often have had teeth coming out the sides of each, coming out of both sides of the main bit of the brooch, which would have looked like a like the the, the blade of a of a of a sawfish with teeth coming out either side. Um, this one doesn't look like it would have had teeth, but it does look like it would have had little bumps or something raised on either side. And if you look at some of the examples on the Portable Antiquities Scheme website, you'll see you just often just get little bumps, not necessarily teeth. Well, little, like, like little tiny teeth. There is lots of traces of some red enamelling and there is some blue enamelling which remains on the sort of head study bit. And these date to the first and um, second century AD and it's just an absolutely lovely brooch and it's just one I haven't found before so I'm, I'm completely thrilled. Um, there's a similar one here you can see what I mean by the little sort of bits coming out and it says here that it, they reckon it's a head stub type. If you follow Macreath or Macreath he says it was a head stub type but it says Hatat would typically class, a, class it as a t-shaped brooch of a sawfish type so I mean take your pick either way it's an absolutely beautiful little thing and I'm completely thrilled um, and as I said it would have made my day if I hadn't found anything else. I did find this um, Hod Hill one earlier which is a lovely example as well. It's missing one of its wings there um, and it's missing the bit of the top with the with all the sort of where the pin and the spring and all the rest of it would have gone but it would have been a really grand thing in its day. I mean look at it. It's just got the most beautiful amount of silvering and if that had been whole I mean wow. These date to the first century AD as well and with all the coins we're going to come back here a bit later because I find some f incredible coins. Um, it's a great feel because if you go from this and one of the coins I found, which are 1st and 2nd century, to the later Constantinian coins I found, it's got a really good spread of Roman stuff, that field. And as I said earlier in the video, I find Celtic things there as well. So it really does date from, you know, 1st century BC, sort of up, right up to the 4th century um, and, and perhaps even later. Anyway two really cool brooches and would just look great in any collection i'm completely thrilled let's go back to the fields very quickly apologies for one clip coming up it has the most incredibly annoying bit of audio in it i i hadn't turned my mic on and it was a really windy day you can hardly hear a thing but it really only goes on for about a minute or two so just stick with it please because it's a I, I find a lovely coin in it but um it's just it's it's annoying that that happened but but as I said, it's only one clip. God, it really is just so nice being out. But God, it's been gloomy in this country recently. But it seems to be gloomy all over Europe. I went fishing in Slovenia, which is beautiful if you've never been. Um, absolutely the most incredible country. And it was absolutely wet and grisly and moody. And it's usually really good at this time of year. We've got to realise in this country, when they're telling us how gloomy we should feel, it's not just a UK thing, it's all around the world. 
the cost of living crisis and all sorts of things. We're made to believe that it's just our problem. I don't know why they want us to think that, but it's not, it's everywhere. Don't feel too gloomy if you can. Now this, right, it's given me time to plug my thing in. There's quite a lot of iron around everywhere and I've been really pleased with myself because I've dug a couple of signals which sounded like the squeaky part of iron but they've both been, um, they weren't very good, they were both lead, but they were being masked by the iron. <laughs> That's just got to be sort of good enough, I think, to dig. Yeah, lovely, right. The only problem with doing this today, like this, is because I'm going to have to put some more sun cream on soon and I'm going to have really sandy, muddy hands. It's quite nice not having your pinpointer sometimes. It's sort of, I don't know, really. Here it is. Oh, it's just a modern-ish looking button. That's not very exciting, I'm afraid, but could have been a Roman coin exact. I thought it was originally, just, just now. Looks like it might be. I mean, it's the right color and everything. If I'd gone like that, you might have thought, ooh, it's a Roman coin. But it's not. <laughs> it's not. It's a horrible modern button. Ah. So, well, that's nice. I think, I hope. It's a Roman. Gave a very dull sound. Isn't that lovely? Posthumous, perhaps? Is it silvered? I wouldn't have thought so much. The sound it gave. I mean, it sounded really coppery. I might not have dug it on another day. And really low and boring. But that's cool, love it. The first good coin I found today. I'm pleased with that, really pleased. Hooray, lovely. Well, I think I'm gonna to have to put my hat on. It's the first time this has been out. A couple of you suspicious of this hat. I love it. I think it's really, really cool. It's just so light and keeps the sun off. When you get to my age, it's getting a bit thin on top. Can't bear it. But this will help. Anyway, um, I found a couple of very small Roman coins I'm not going to bore you with, but I have just found something. If you watch me from these videos, you know I get very excited about. And that is a really really cool piece of bronze with a couple of other bits and pieces there that's an odd shaped piece of lead like a sort of u-shaped um nothing really to write home now i don't think there's anything on this sometimes it looks like there are but it's um it's just gnarly and green and it could easily it could be something i'm, I'm just not sure but this is just as i say nothing but good can happen from small pieces of chunky gnarly bronze it's the best sign you could possibly get, especially for Iron Age and Roman, I reckon. Anyway, I've got a good signal here. Now I think that's a coin every day of the week in this field, because it's just that sort of sound. It's, do you know what, that is a little bit smashed up, um, but what's remaining is really, really lovely. I can clearly see a really um, obvious emperor, it looks like one of the girls, whether it's an empress, probably Theodora, or what's the other one, not Theodora, Theodora often looks a bit old and gnarly. At the time she was on coins, she, she was a bit, that's Helena, sorry. I think it's Theodora, not Helena. Helena's the mother of Constantine. By the time she gets on coins, by the time Constantine manages to bring her back, because his father um, sort of abandoned her and sort of just, you know, it had nothing to do with her, having remarried. I think that's Theodora, and I'm thrilled with it. It's an absolute beauty. Yeah, I'm really pleased with that. Lovely coin. Hooray! That's about my fourth Roman today. It's quite windy, but I've got my... I've got my back to it most of the time. 
and it's a nice warm wind so I'm not too worried about it as long as you can hear me which I think you probably hope you do hopefully you can I reckon this must be another coin <laughs> this part of the field's very clean you, there's no rubbish in it, a bit of foil sometimes but that's not foil or if it is it's thick foil no that sounds really nice I've just found another little fragment as well You've got to be really disciplined when you don't have your pinpointer with you. You've got to... It's quite a good lesson actually. You, it just teaches you not to rely on it so much. Just going straight for it. I think it's still just deeper and deeper. I don't think I'm missing it to the side. He says. Yeah, maybe it's just on this side. God, infuriating. God, it's nice soft sand. I think I've dislodged it. It's even louder now. It's going to be a cartridge after all this. My God, what a pain. Come on. I can see it. Hooray! It is, it's another coin. It's just on the top of the spade. <laughs> Look at that. It's just here. And it's another little Roman. How wonderful. I love finding Roman coins. I could do it all day long. As long as I don't, I'm not like that chap I saw. I always tell you this story who dug up so many Roman coins, one after the other. Got so tired. I had to stop watching, it just got too much. But that's lovely. What a, what a coin. Um, in such good condition. A bit bigger than the other ones, apart from the posthumous I found back there. Um, absolutely beautiful. Well, there's all sorts of things on that. We're not gonna not get that one. Um, I'm really pleased. I mean, it's probably Constantine or someone. The condition of the coins I'm finding today is second to none. And the brooch is even better. <sighs> Gosh. God, it would just be lovely to find a bit of silver. If I find, if I find a Roman silver coin, I'm stopping. I'm calling it a day. Because I've just been too spoiled already. fishing it's all gone a bit quiet but I have just found a hilarious coin I'll show you in a second and then this well it's either a cartridge because I've lugged my um, tripod down this end of the field um, and I'm digging up loads of cartridges it is obviously quite shooty around here let's get rid of some of these cables that's my sound recorder right it's not a cartridge, I think it's a coin. Or maybe a tiny piece of lead, perhaps. And bending down each time is getting a bit tiring too. With a pinpointer you can just poke around, but this is this is um this is the way I've got to do it today. Well, it's another bit of a Roman coin fragment. Gosh, that would have been fabulous had it been full because the, um, the detail is absolutely beautiful. What a beauty. Um, there's a shame that because, I mean, I can read the writing quite clearly on one side. Um, something Guiano is the... Uh, oh. 
and it's a, it's um it's got the and the, the that Christian symbol, the chi ro, which was used by Constantine onwards. Um, so you have got someone standing with the P and the cross going through it. So that really does date it to sort of mid late fourth century. Um, and it probably is Constantine or someone, because what a what, what a shame! But to how beautiful. And then this. I'll show you, uh, I, I did um, do a camera shot of me opening it from the clod and I revealed an empress on, I mean a, a goddess on one side and it was look, look, looking quite promising. Hang on. <coughs> Excuse me, hay fever. Oh. <coughs> I'll edit those out or not. Um, and then I turned it around and it's the most brilliant barbarous coin. Um, as I always say, if you're, if the emperor looks fairly comedic, or witchy, or pointy, or with those looking like a sort of with a wizard's beard, um, then it's almost certainly barbarous. Now this doesn't have much of that, but it's almost certainly barbarous because it's it's just the helmet's all wrong and it's sitting right down, coming across his ears. Um, he he just doesn't look like an emperor at all. Looks the least imperial um, portrait you could see, and sort of rubbishy writing. So even though that's quite a nice big one, it's a barbarous radiant. And actually, they've got much more character than often some of the other ones. So here, these two coins, I mean, together, just amazing. I mean, I'm finding so many cool coins and with so much detail on them. Well, <laughs> my God, it's not often I get a Roman day like this. Just fabulous. And this, this really, I mean, listen. I mean, really, really punchy. The sort of thing that turns out to be a really big uh, rifle round end. You know, one of those pointy things which haven't exploded. But no, I've, I've, I can see what it is from here, but I haven't completely checked it out yet. Okay, it's a Dupondius. A jolly wonky one by the look of it. Okay, wow, well look, that's a lovely, nice, chunky one. I wonder how much detail's on it. Um, <laughs> lots is the answer. Oh, fantastic. Look at that. Look at the legend coming up there. Gosh. Well, that really gave a proper sound. Okay, that's the emperor on one side. I don't know who it is. Look at that. God, it's wonky, isn't it? And then on the other, we've got... are absolutely thrilled. I love these chunky Romans. They are Dupondiuses, aren't they? I think. Smaller versions of the Cistercius. I can't remember how many asses they were, but look at that. Absolutely wonderful. That's made my day. I think it's really early. Um, and I'm not going to scratch it more, too much more. And um, we'll just leave that as it is until we get home. God, I'm really thrilled with that. God, that sounded loud. I mean, that you can't ask for something in better condition than that. I'm absolutely thrilled. I'm not going to rub it anymore. I think it's someone like Hadrian or someone like that. Um, let's just leave it till we get home. That, that's, I think that's the best Dupondius, if that's what it is, I've ever found. Um, and I'm, I'm completely thrilled. I'm bowled over. Well, let, let's have a look at a couple of these coins more closely. I won't go through all of them. We found too many. But the sandy conditions in that field just means that the, some of these coins come out in the most incredible condition. And as I said, it's brilliant for doing it without a pinpointer as well, because it was really, really easy. Being without a pinpointer when it's horrible going is, is really not much fun, but that, th th that day was absolutely fine. We'll start off with this Antoninus Pius because it has cleaned up absolutely incredibly. It's the best Dupondius I've ever found, b b just bar none. Um, the legend is absolutely mint on, on, on both sides. Um, I'm not quite sure who's on the reverse. I haven't really had time to do, re research it. It says C2 on it. Um, C on one side and the, and the Roman numeral two or two eyes on the other. That might mean that console for the second time or something like that. But it is just the most incredible coin. Antoninus Org Pius 
it says, the, just the condition. Chunky Romans don't tend to survive that well, mainly due to their size. I mean, they're so easily abraded. But this one, I mean, the relief on it is absolutely phenomenal. I mean, it, it just completely blows me away. I mean, Antoninus Pius was 138 to 161. He was the fourth good emperor after Nerva, Trajan, Hadrian adopted Antoninus Pius, who in turn adopted Marcus Aurelius. And then after that, you get Commodus and all the rest of it and Elagabalus and people like that who really did, you know, um, bring the whole thing down again. Uh, but the, I mean, it's just, it, it's one of the best coins I've ever found bar none. I mean, I'm completely, I just can't stop looking at it. And, and I used the composite pencils on it very gently to bring out, to bring out that. And it's just, whoa. I mean, they do not often come out like that. I'm completely thrilled. The next best one was Theodora. Um, it was Theodora. She's absolutely beautiful. I can clearly read Theo on one side and Doro on the other. Uh, and there is a, a goddess on the back of it. Um, I'm, again, I'm not sure which one, but you probably, I, I, I don't have time to go on too long about them anyway. Now, this, the Antoninus Pius um, is, in, is absolutely in keeping with these brooches. It's, it's sort of second century, early, early second century. Theodora's a bit later. Now, one of the reasons I want to talk about her quickly, very quickly, because we really don't have too much time, is the fact that I, it got me wondering why on earth is Theodora on coins when she was? This coin dates to about 337 AD. She was the first wife of, of Constantius I, who was Constantine the Great's father. Now, he dumped Constantine's mother, Helena, as I said in the video, for Theodora. Why on earth in that case? All Theodora's descendants were basically massacred by Constantine, didn't want any of them around. So why on earth do we suddenly, after the death of Constantine, see her on coins? It, it doesn't, just doesn't add up. I've tried to do a little bit of research on it. I can't find out the reason so far. Um, so if anyone knows why his, why the person who his mother was basically abandoned for appears on coins after his death even though she has no living none of the emperors after after constantine had anything had any um relationship to her i don't know why she's suddenly augusta on coins please tell me i mean I, i'll find out eventually but if you know please let me know because it's it's confusing me. Now, I said it would be lovely to find silver. Well, we sort of did. I'm absolutely thrilled. One of the slithers, one of the fragments of coins, which I, um, I cleaned up, has shown masses of silvering on it. And that's because it's an Antoninianus of Salonina. Now, we found a silver Salonina quite recently in one of my videos, but this is not a denarius. It's too big to be a denarius. I can't work out yet whether it's actually silver or has a high silver content or it is silvered now it looked bronze when i brought it out of the ground it's only by scratching away at the surface with the with the pencils that i've actually bringing out the silvering so i reckon that's got silver content and not just silvering so we did find our silver even though it's only a bit of a salonina coin um again i bang on about her in a previous video i'll put the link below if you want to know about salonina she was quite cool too um but that's just wonderful um, th th that was posthumous, I'm glad to say. Constantius II, that beautiful coin with the soldiers with the standards, thrilled with that. And then very quickly, this little Constantinian fragment as well, which is in beautiful condition. Um, it, I, I think it's Constantine. And it does, it's got the, the, the symbol, the chi ro symbol, which I'll talk about in another time because we run out of time for this one now. I don't want to go on for too long, but that's just a beautiful coin as well. I'm thrilled with that, even though again, it's just a tiny bit, but they've got so much character, some of these little fragments. Anyway, thank you very much for listening to all that um, with me and let's go back to the fields. Well, we might just start vaguely heading back. I mean, that's a lot of coins I found today. Um, and those two fabulous brooches. No silver yet, not too late. And it's not to say that one of those coins already might not be silver. Some, a couple of them look quite silverish. And here's another one, sunbathing. I could, I could hear it was on the surface from the very obvious double beep. Look, there we go. I'm becoming like that bloke who had all the found all the Roman coins one after the other. I'm gonna have to stop showing you. 
it's another wonky there's the goddess there i think and someone will be on the back is it another barber on anyway we'll better clean that up with me yes can you see the um the radiate head the radiate crown it'll be a probably another barbarous coin maybe not that might be rather nice actually you can see the writing on it <coughs> well it's been just fabulous i'm i'm going home now i've sort of had enough um it's been tiring <laughs> without the pin pointer but brilliant fun and what a what a day for roman stuff i hope you like roman stuff anyway we'll end on this which it must be on the surface. I haven't seen it. I don't know what it is. And part of me just said, just dig it. And if it's any good, record it afterwards. But just in case, I've just got a funny feeling about it. It'll either be really good or it'll be really horrible. It does sound horrible. I don't think it's very far down. Oh my God, that, oh, it's awful in the speaker, awful in my ear. I keep reaching for my pinpointer, it's not there. I've dropped it. Bloody thing. Right, you got it. Oh, well, it's a socking great big... <laughs> It's a socking great lump of lead. No wonder. I mean, it did sound... Well, that's a great sign anyway. Well, hang on. It might have something on it. I don't think that's a pot mend. Um, and it's certainly very, very old lead, whatever it is. But that's all it is. It's just a lump of lead. Guys and girls, thank you very much for joining me. Um, and um, see you next time. Hopefully it'll be as warm as it is today.